Dennis Alexander, so lovely to see you again. We caught up a couple of years ago at uh, one of the conferences over in the States. And I know you've been really busy writing lots of music. And so one of the courses that I saw recently is Premier Piano Express. So right. tell me about that. It's a, it's a wonderful series. It's been very, very popular here in the States in the last several years. Um, we started this particular course because we had so many requests from teachers who were loving the children's uh, Alfred Premier Piano course that we uh, did a number of years ago. Uh, and teachers were wanting something that they might be able to use with um, teenage students or maybe their younger students who moved along very, very quickly who didn't need as much reinforcement uh, or for adult beginners. So that was really the main reason why we came out with the Express All-in-One Accelerated course, which actually includes material from the lesson books, the technique books, theory books, and uh, some pieces from the performance books of the children's series. But what we did, we took out all of the pictures and it makes it look a little more grown up and uh, the, the material moves along at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. It works beautifully for uh, all of these different age groups that I just mentioned. And it also has backing tracks. So I love backing tracks because it's a really great way to get kids to use their ears and to introduce the music. Um, so you've done backing tracks for up to the first three books? Yes, we have uh, the first uh, three books, books one, two, and three, all have MIDI accompaniments, mm -hmm. which are contained on the, uh, the CD-ROMs that accompany each book. And those MIDI tracks uh, on the, what's called TNT2 software, is particularly wonderful for students or teachers who don't have a digital piano, who don't have access to a, an instrument that plays back MIDI, because with the TNT2 software, they can upload that to their computer and they can play any of those tracks uh, in the different versions that we have. We have a performance version, a slow practice version. Uh, they can hear it with just the MIDI accompaniment without the piano or with the piano. So four different ways to listen to it. They can slow it down, they can speed it up. So uh, for instance, my adult students really love having access to the, uh, to the TNT2 software because they can practice uh, at a slow tempo and still hear the, the background accompaniment, or they can just listen to the piano part at a slow tempo, practice with it, and mm -hmm. it really helps their rhythm, uh, especially. Oh, doesn't it? The, I always find with kids that learn from backing tracks, they're just so much more musical. Well, let's have a listen to one of those uh, from, and this one's called Jazzy Tocatina. And what book's that from, Dennis? Book two. That sounds like great fun, Dennis. The um, accompaniment, I, I really like the, you know, sort of the left hand melody with the, I think, is it a trombone sound or something like that? So they're really understanding a little bit of orchestration as well. What would you say the learning points were from that song? Well, we want our students to learn to play all over the instrument. And this is a course that emphasizes actually a lot of, of left hand uh, improving left hand technique, uh, improving reading skills in the left hand. So you'll find lots of pieces in this series that have left hand melodies. Uh, and uh, so students learn to not only get a good balance between say a melody in the left hand, but a right hand accompaniment, and of course vice versa. But this little piece is uh, it's just very rhythmical. It gets uh, the students all over the keyboard. They start off in the left hand 
you know, on, on middle C. And then on the second half, they move the left hand down uh, an octave to that bass C. And then at the very end of the piece, they go even lower than that when they have an octava sign on, in the last two measures. And it also just really reinforces the interval playing, uh, especially the interval of the sixth, which we've introduced uh, just before this. Let's hear another one. This one's called Floating Down the River. So beautifully played. Isn't pedaling so important for kids to learn? Well, one of the things that I think is most important in elementary level uh, pedagogy is teaching students to learn how to relax their wrist when they play. Mm. So while uh, there's way too much tension involved in, in elementary level playing, and if this isn't addressed early on, it becomes even worse as students get older. So I'm very, very conscious of, of uh, teaching my, you know, my, at least my own students how to relax when they play. And this particular piece was written with that very thing in mind. There are lots of uh, elements where they have uh, half notes at the end of, of measures. Uh, and each time they have a, even a one measure phrase, uh, when they when they go from the first when they lift and move, it's important that they learn to to lift with the wrist. The wrist pulls the fingers out of the keys, and they get this particular choreography uh, over and over and over in this piece. So that you know, we all know that the mother of learning is repetition. So <laughs> good pedagogy pieces like this are very, very helpful uh, for the student in learning how to move gracefully around the keyboard. It's also a piece which teaches and reinforces very, very beautiful legato pedal technique. And just the fact that we have lots of eighth notes, uh, two eighth notes in the beginning of almost every measure, the students learn to go up, down, and up on the first eighth note, down on the second eighth note, which then reinforces this really uh, good legato uh, some people call it syncopated pedal technique. I would love to have a video of you playing it to show my student if I was using this book, because I think um, the view of how you're playing it is a really great way to actually show the student as well. Sure it is. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to listen to a piece called Scenes from Granada, which is from the book three. Um, what are the teaching elements to look out for while we watch this video? Well, in this particular piece, we introduce students to the concept of cadenzas. Mm -hmm. uh, so often, uh, students at these levels have never even heard that word. They have no idea what a cadenza really you know, means. So this little uh, very uh, Spanish sounding piece uh, incorporates a cadenza on the second page and in fact what I often do when I teach this piece with my own students is to encourage them to uh, after they've learned what's written in the cadenza that we uh, have for them uh, I encourage them to improvise their own cadenza and and do something that's even a little bit more elaborate just so they have fun uh, with 
concept of improvisation and really learning what a cadenza is all about. Of course, the piece also incorporates a lot of uh, syncopation, which we have introduced in rhythm uh, exercises before this. And uh, this is a course that really emphasizes rhythm. And, and we, we have um, rhythms, uh, specific rhythm patterns that are introduced at every level, followed by pieces which incorporate those same rhythms. So it, it's a course that really, really does, I think, a very, very good job of solidifying uh, rhythmic playing in our students at all levels. Well, let's have a listen to Scenes of Granada. Beautifully played, Dennis, again. Now we've got one more piece from book four. It's called Festival Fantastico. What are the learning opportunities in this one? This is one of those pieces that I call a ta-da piece. Uh, students always love these kinds of kind of showy festival, uh, concert, recital types of pieces. And it's uh, one of the last pieces in the book. And uh, it starts off with a nice big introduction and uh, it has lots of really fun um, rhythm patterns. Those types of rhythms all the way through it. Uh, it also has lots of uh, rapid chords in different inversions, uh, particularly first inversion. And uh, it's just great fun to play and it's great fun to practice. So it's one of those pieces that I think uh, so many teachers love because it makes their students sound better than they might even be. <laughs> we always love pieces like that one, don't we? <laughs> Let's have a listen.
Wow, that was fantastic, Dennis. I would love my students to be able to play that. In fact, I might even look at that book for some of my students um, coming up to the end of the end of year recital. 